Testing, testing. <laughs> I'm not going to stand up, but uh, yes, let's just begin, uh, comrades. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, and uh, welcome to the 2017 Visual Arts Symposium uh, here at the Market Photo Workshop in Newtown. And it is an initiative that this year we decided to partner with uh, uh, obviously market photo workshop um, as the Black Mark Collective. Um, I think most of you would have read in the program what Black Mark is about. If not, yes, let's let's do the reading. <laughs> um, but in short, yes, we are a reading and writing uh, collective that um, looks and uh, critiques and uh, interrogates and talks about the visual art space as we are involved um, in that sector um, in our respective kind of uh, engagements. So my name is uh, Samin Judy. I go by Dr. Samin Judy now. <laughs> uh, and um, I will be just uh, kind of facilitating this, uh, this short session. Um, in the program, you will see that we will have a keynote by Nakreto, um, who is the uh, head of the Market for the Workshop. And then we will have Ledudu uh, Mahia, who has very kindly and very generously uh, made time to join us, who will then respond to some of the key points that um, uh, will be raised, I suppose, in Nakreto's uh, 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 address. Um, I think if, if you also want to read about their bio, I'm not going to read their biographies because we've provided that information as well in, 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 in the program. So we'll, we'll get to it. Uh, yeah, over to you. Good evening. Um, Lecheto Magola, head of the photo workshop. It's been a, a very tough few days. I'm trying to compose myself because I was just getting too excited about the idea of keynote address because um, I see it happening many times in uh, local government uh, times for elections and whatnot and it's like wow you know I'm not going to be reading from something that I had prepared or should I just impromptu and, um, and I think one of um, the persons that really inspired um, me in, in this journey um, uh, within the visual arts um, was Haile Kerima. Um, it's one of those guys that doesn't, I don't think he plans anything. He just goes and speaks from the heart, um, from experience, um, from life, life lived, and also how that life lived is, he engages with it in his, from his own perspective. And I think that's, that's a beautiful thing uh, for any human to, to do. We have to have position, we have to have a critical uh, analysis, reading, uh, engagement with the environment. And I thought maybe, because I was so nervous, I thought I would just bring this book because it's my Bible, Ele Rebellion. Um, it's a group of, of crazy uh, African dudes and ladies uh, in the 1970s, 80s, uh, in the uh, University of Los Angeles, um, where you know they grouped because they had just had issues of like, like um, students in this film school um, around how firstly they were treated um, as the other but the, the process of, of, of um, training the types of sources or referencing points were not within the frame cultural frame or, or experience and at times were insulting um, to them um, they, they started this, this uh, movement, LA Rebina, to begin you know, a process of firstly uh, grouping themselves and, and, and engaging and getting a better understanding of the challenges that they, they face as, as students um, in, in how they, they are taught and what they are taught, you know, uh, but also the need to start doing something about it. You know, that's where I learned about the term I'm learning. And this began then. Um, I think that's for me. That's the departure point, and um, I, I, I just want to first establish the sense 
or inspiration of me why I'm here, uh, why I, I got involved in the visual arts uh, in the first place. Um, my mother, well, my parents' bedroom used to have this, my mother's Catholic, used to have this um, photo of um, Satan, the devil, a dark, you know, uh, not nicely pleasant looking horns, yeah, a little bit of wool hair, and then right on the next to him is like this golden person with blonde hair and, you know, uh, something like this, I can't remember. Uh, but I, the fear that gave us, we, at, at home we never, you know, just, just I, I didn't understand why their parents, our parents had that in their, in their home. But I guess for them, it was something that was um, a sense of security, spiritual security, uh, in knowing that they have Jesus Christ in their home and, and that Jesus Christ was problematic to us. And uh, in my journey, you know, through, through the process of, 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 of learning, going to uh, study fine art, you know, the same um, bombardment of, of, of uh, text or sources of reference that comes from a particular uh, point of view that for me I didn't see relevant in my own understanding of shared experience with many people that are represented in those texts, uh, especially around even, even going, going as far as uh, labeling of, of certain artistic practice like your township photographers or township art or uh, craft. Or, you know, there is that kind of very dirty space that many photographers, amazing photographers such as Trevor Markova, uh, were classified as not necessarily the you know uh, contemporary artist, but falling up between township and craft, and, and you know it's it, it's always been problematic, and um, and it goes back to you know my understanding um, of us as humans, humans uh, as very, very visual species. I think um, sight is one of the most important senses, um, and how we navigate our space, you know, by seeing through seeing, and in those process, many a times we we frame, you know, we focus on what's of interest to us. And uh, in essence, um, that will then be uh, translated or processed into uh, our beliefs, our subconscious, and it becomes our storage facility. And in future, one will, you know, deja vu, an image will come out that, you know, stored within you know, the back of your mind. And that interest around image making process came around from them, you know, uh, how a camera work, you know, how um, the technology itself, how it was founded, um, what what its purpose was meant to be, um, and I think in many, in, in many aspects it's been quite horrible to uh, many of us in the global south, um, um, how our past was documented, um, how our you know, four pairs were presented, and how that documentation has been presented to us through our education systems, especially in South Africa, where you still, uh, at this moment, have history books that um, uses some of these images that dehumanizes, you know, um, um, people of this land. And, um, and that, I think, through this process of, of, of um, uh, going, I mean, getting to understand what Ellery Rebillo knows about, um, I started kind of engaging further um, around uh, the process of image making, um, how we construct meaning within the frame, you know, uh, what makes sense when you frame, and whatever that's in it, how it is laid out, you know, what does it say, how do you define it? And one of the outcomes in terms of my trying to understand was that language plays a, a huge role that, uh, that I'm a baby dude from Hasgukune. Uh, we have, I think we define things in a particular way that is inspired by our, our cultural, uh, social construct within our space and, uh, and our experiences. Um, and how, how, how can that be used you know, in the contrary sense where you know, we, we understand that our language hasn't, hasn't evolved. I think in many aspects because of, of, of colonial uh, interventions. Uh, but how do we, in these times, um, so I'm jumping up and down, um, forgive me for that. How do we, in our current times, you know, uh, revisit um, and, and unpack 
our understanding of our own languages and how they relate to, to images and, and, and create an and, uh, association of meaning within the elements of images. And I think that this drives me to what the Market Photo Workshop is, uh, which I think many people believe it's a photojournalism uh, school, or school of photojournalism, or it's known for, for that um, aspect of photography. But I think it's, it's beyond that. Um, I think the Photo Workshop became, especially around the 2000s, became a space of, of deeper engagement around the politics of images, uh, but also what images uh, meant to people um, I mean, currently we have in our presence, we have, um, uh, we have in Kleke, who was one of the students in 2000, 2001, 2003, where, when, in my way back, trying to research, um, those group of people really, really made a huge impact, I think, that, um, that impacted basically on, 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 on the milestones, or it became an important, I think, historic uh, phase in the South African practice of photography, uh, where this, uh, I, I don't know if we are here young then, but this, this like young people that had amazing um, uh, positions uh, and urgency. Um, the way they 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 saw issues that were confronting them. Um, I mean, this includes Lolo Meleko, uh, Zanele Moholu, um, Musa Rabulan. How they took those issues and brought them into the class environment and started that discussing them using photography <coughs> as as a mode of discussion. And I think within that, uh, there were a whole lot of developments that came, in, came out of it in terms of understanding, a better understanding of visual vocabulary and, and the process of unlearning, I think, in many aspects of how, uh, within the market for workshop itself, uh, how certain systems of, 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 of teaching, um, especially the referencing, I keep referring to the reference sources of, 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 of uh, reference, came, also came from a particular uh, perspective, but how they started engaging um, content and visual content in that space, and how photography became a vehicle to engage many other issues um, around race, identity, ageism, sexuality, gender, and I think uh, it's evident in, 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 in with the impact uh, of that group in, in, in who we see really pushing certain kind of um, conversations or confronting certain issues of, of uh, local, national, international importance, and. Um, I think I'm so confused, I don't know what I said, but I think I was here and I'm going to hand over because we need to you know, get going. Thank you very much for listening to the photo. Uh, thank you, Professor. We are here to interrogate and unpick and uh, I had a nice word this, uh, this past week, disentangle. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, before I hand over to you, Lord Juma, um, and maybe yes, we can. We'll have a discussion afterwards and open up to 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 to, to the floor. But I would like us to think about um, just a one aspect that we are, after all, in Heritage Month. And what, uh, this week, I also heard something that was very interesting about heritage. That the word heritage actually does not appear in the constitution, our constitution, and that's very interesting. And I don't know how true it is, but. Uh, when we think about uh, the type of work that we do as visual arts pr practitioners, um, and how it, it, it links to this idea of, I think, what um, nationally, the idea of what arts, culture, and heritage, and what all these terms encompass, we are <coughs> at the forefront, comrades, of defining that. And that's why we're here. Uh, greetings. Thank you for coming out on a Friday night to talk instead of putting. Um, I mean, th so there's a couple of things I think I, you know, I, I got from the talk, but also I think um, the one thing I'm primarily a writer, and then every now and then when I when I can't write, I make some images, which is it's either that or or death, really. So it kind of works out. Um, so the one thing that I, I, I think I wanted to, to, you know, for us to think a, a little bit about is the word vocabulary, right? Both in terms of of it existing as a text, but also if 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 you think about it, it existing as a kind of a visual text, right? So today I, I saw an interesting kind of discussion with 
um, on Facebook, um, a friend of mine who, you know, he's a photographer, um, and someone called him a cameraman, right? And, and he was like, no, I'm a photographer. And it's interesting for me because when I was growing up, the idea of someone taking pictures and coming to your house, often on a bicycle, with like, you know, those film cameras was called a cameraman. But now it's called a photographer, which sounds a lot more sexier than a cameraman. Um, and this is interesting for me, both in terms of how we make images and what we think of the person who makes those images, right? Because there's a kind of a certain idea of a cameraman. He's kind of like, you know, the, the, the uncle we know in, in the township or in the village who, you know, makes these images and maybe gets drunk on the weekend and then he's back at our house to make bed day pictures and, and that's a cameraman and, and there's also kind of like a, a slightly different understanding of a photographer it's kind of like a f more flamboyant idea of making images right and this is interesting for me because when you again I went to see an exhibition whose uh, photographer will remain anonymous which is interesting in a way because everyone that I've spoken to thinks of the exhibition as kind of like suffering I suppose in a way suffering from the colonial gaze, right? And this is interesting for me of what we think both of being a camera and a photographer, but it, it, that it strikes me that in, when I was growing up, if, if you were referred as a cameraman, there was a sense that you were part of a family's history, right? Like if your child turns five, the cameraman is there to capture, you know, it's graduation, the cameraman is there to capture, that the understanding of photographer is slightly different, right? In the case of this, this exhibition, the idea is that the photographer um, you know, went and made these images that people are like, there's a kind of like an uncomfortability to them. And I wanted to kind of like maybe in the talk or when you go home and, and, and party and do some other fun stuff, we can think about the idea, what does it mean to be a photographer now? And what does it mean to kind of, does it help our photography to look at our photographers with these ideas that this is how the colonial photographers photograph the Africans? And does it help us to then interrogate our own photographers with those ideas, right? Is it not possible that we completely talk about our photography in kind of a unique way that we don't, the ideas of colonial photography doesn't even come into that discussion, right? And, and I mean, the other, the other last point I wanted to make was also, there's a, there's a film that's coming out called, uh, the five, so it's kind of, it, it was shot in Lesotho, it's in Sesotho, yeah, Five Fingers it's called, oh, right? Five Fingers of Masao, yeah. Western. Western. yeah, so it's a Western form, right? And so, as, as we do that, we, we, we like to write reviews of um, trailers instead of waiting for the film to come out. Someone wrote a review of this film and the entire, entire text was around this idea of the, the, it presented the film that its only existence was to revert the ideas of Western, of Western films, right? And my interest in reading that was like, but what if the film is not interested in that idea? What if the film is telling the story <coughs> in a genre? So my idea was like, can we talk about that film without having to mention spaghetti western and western films and see it as kind of like the African whatever interpretation of western and not even be dragged into engaging that it kind of looks or this is what the sort of traditional idea of western films are and I think those ideas are interesting for me both in photography and, and filmmaking but also in writing you know how we read our work and how we use our own terms and our own ideologies to read our own work and, and Instead of kind of dragging it backwards, we move forward and not even entertain the ideas that came before before that. Yeah, that's it. Thank you for that. Uh, are there any questions or comments before? Okay. Well. Um, <coughs> Thank you for that because I think you yes yeah you 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 made us I think think about you know um, what it means to actually make images um, but also uh, 
Today, I also, uh, um, one of the questions around this, so I've been thinking about heritage a lot today. I don't know, for some reason, it's, it's been in my, in, in, in my mind. And one of the questions I, that was popping up in my, in my, in my head is um, how um, um, certain images, for instance, so the, you were talking about the vocabulary of, uh, so how, how can we, can we imagine an, an African museum uh, in terms of the heritage uh, things and the heritage motifs and around arts and culture and, and if so, what does it look like? And I think that that's a question that kind of um, provokes and evokes the question like, uh, of imagination of can we actually imagine um, what an African museum would look like? And if it does, like if, if we can, what would it look like? Yeah in terms of vocabulary, language, ter terminology, and all those image, reading, display, um, and all those things that come into the visuality of experiencing yeah, the world, yeah? Yes. Hello. Uh, uh, this is my camera. <laughs> camera. I like that because somebody said, to the cameraman is there, becomes part of the family, becomes the memory of the family. So basically, the cameraman is, from where I'm sitting, is the timekeeper and a very important uh, element or part of the family, as far as memory is concerned. Uh, um, there's a question we have here. Uh, You know, when you spoke about where you come from, Skuku, uh, you spoke about language, our language has not evolved, you know, and, and I, would, I would really like you to unpack that what you really mean when you say our language has not evolved, and, you know, and there was also, you, you touched on the point of like the need to unlearn, at what point did black, at what point was the point of learning for black people, but maybe to narrow down black photographers, if ever we need to be at the point of unlearning. I already made my two questions like that. Okay, uh, thanks, Mundu. Um, by the way, Mundu is a great image maker, cameraman. Um, <laughs> I think for me, unlearning is not necessarily about we as producers of content. And um, photography is, is, is a societal um, tool for documenting time and memory. And for me, reading of images doesn't end with us as image makers. You know, uh, it's, it's everybody in a society whose Im these images are meant uh, for consumption. And I think that's where the, 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 I think the challenges are in terms of what was imposed you know, on a society in terms of images. For example, uh, it's a silly example, but I think it's real, that some of us grew up seeing the only imagery that we saw uh, on billboards was of Omo or uh, Mama washing clothes with their hands, right? Uh, on television, we are always dancing. Um, any advert that you see is, 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 is about with a lot of black people and we are, we are dancing. And people, I think, got accustomed to that to such an extent that they started seeing themselves in those, within those images, uh, as images representing who they are. And they started celebrating it in many aspects. Um, and I think for me, I'm speaking to that, you know, that there they need to be a process of, of, of revisiting these things, and, and especially through our education spaces, uh, where we, we, we bring them out, we profile them, and we, we attack them, we engage them about their problematicness. Uh, because I think in many aspects, of, I, I'm the strong believer that images are a catalyst for our, our, our evolution. You know, without images, I think we'll probably be living a different life. And I don't imagine ourselves not having images in front of us, from television to uh, books to uh, newspapers and whatnot. Um, so I'm learning is for all of us, not just uh, a few. Uh, the second point is around uh, evolving our, our, our growth of our languages. I think 
then I, I, I believe, uh, for example, like I said, I'm from Haskukune, uh, previously in the war, um, uh, we, used to, we used to have this guy called Dr. Sien Patudi, you know, and there were quite a lot of scholars, Gadi Ming and whatnot, who were really working hard to, to preserve the language, and they, they produced many, many books. Uh, but in the bigger uh, uh, scheme of things, uh, because of being forced to use language such as English and, and Africans as a medium of expression and learning, um, those, those languages started adopting, uh, well, they started, become, they started becoming mainframe, uh, well, they, they started becoming modes of how we interpret ourselves, how we understand ourselves. Uh, I mean, it's so difficult to even remember when the last day I speak Sibeli, true Sibeli. You know, and this has been happening for, for many, many years, you know, uh, over 100, 200 years, you know, introduction of churches into our space, you know, how we just got stuck in terms of description of new things that were coming. We started having Maadi, you know, a window is a fence there, you know, which is brought from Africans. And those words exist in our daily vocabulary when we speak our own uh, indigenous languages. And I think that is the reality that I'm speaking to. That. Uh, at some point, our languages stopped growing because they were just overtaken by the horrible, you know, past that we have. Would you like to respond to that? I mean, I, I really like the idea of thinking of a cameraman as a timekeeper, both just in our personal spaces, but also in our political space, right? Both in, in terms of the. Um, in uh, politics and also the politics that are outside, and I think, I mean, if you if you if you look at photography in this country, and and you 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 get to really see kind of like the the direction that political, um, if you if you look at political photography, but also if you look at other politics, and you get to see that photographers um, are getting to to address those politics to photography, and one of those photographers, <coughs> I mean, would be Zane Lumuholi. So so you, I mean, you know, the timekeeper idea is for me is really interesting, and I. I really like that. Yeah.